Hello there, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to construct confidence intervals uh, for the linear regression line slope. Alright, so let us briefly uh, review pretty much what we've talked about so far. Uh, so overall, we've talked about what we call the line of best fit, uh, which I'm going to abbreviate by y is equal to mx plus b. So this is a statistic in some way because this is based on some sample. Uh, so since this is a statistic by definition, that means it has to be an estimate for some parameter. So there's going to be a line of best fit for the population, uh, which is going to be equal to some constants beta 1 times x plus beta 0. So here, m is an approximation for beta 1, and b is an approximation for beta 0. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on how to construct a confidence interval for beta 1 by using our statistic line of best slope. Alright, so how are we going to do this? So quickly, let us review. So m is a point estimate for beta 1. This is the first main concept. So that means uh, a reasonable confidence interval uh, for beta 1 under some level of confidence C is going to have the same exact structure as some of the other confidence intervals, namely m minus some marginal error and m plus some marginal error. Where m is pretty much the center of the confidence interval uh, since it is an unbiased estimate of the parameter beta 1. Uh, so the margin of error, which I'm not going to derive here, is going to be equal to uh, t critical value, t alpha over 2, uh, times the reciprocal of the standard deviation, times the square root of the sum of the squared residuals, divided by the product of m minus 1 times m minus 2. So remember, uh, sx is the standard deviation of the sample. Uh, this is your critical value under some two-sided level of confidence, c. Uh, so if you have a one-sided hypoth alternative hypothesis test, this would be T alpha or TC, depending on which side. Uh, SSR is going to be the sum of the squared residuals, and remember what a squared residual is. Uh, so this is our line of best fit, Y hat, uh, and it's going to be an approximation for some Y values. So this is Y, this is Y hat, and the residual is the distance between Y and Y hat. So remember, SSR is going to be the sum of the squared residuals of x. And n minus 1 is the degrees of freedom for the standard deviation, and n minus 2 is the degrees of freedom from the SSR. And that gives you the marginal of error for this confidence interval, and then we can sort of uh, do hypothesis tests based on that. All right, so as an example, let us consider... Uh, uh, an actual data set, and I've already got it here in Excel. So here we're focusing on the satisfaction levels of employees uh, and their weekly salary. So one of the questions that somebody may pose is, is there a correlation between these? Uh, and some people will say yes, some people will say no, uh, and hence one should conduct a survey or a study to sort of understand this. So I'm going to first uh, sort of look at this data and sort of uh, seek to analyze it. So I'm going to insert a scatter plot here, and you may see that there's a sort of upwards trend going on here, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate uh, the line of best fit. All right, so I'm going to begin by calculating, uh, or I can just go here, uh, click one of these points, right click and add trend line, and we can display the equation of the line of best fit here. So this is the line of best fit. Uh, so uh, that means what? So y hat, or y regression, is going to be equal to approximately 50.19. So that's the slope times our x value plus 817.1. Uh, and these are the approximations uh, that this line of best fit gives our data. Right, So our residual for each of these numbers is going to be equal to y minus y hat. And I'm going to actually square these residuals since we're going to do this anyway later. 
So that is the squared residual. And I'm going to do that for all these values. So my SSR is going to be equal to uh, the sum of all these values in column D. All right, that's great. Uh, so let us also choose some level of confidence C. Uh, so let's work under a level of confidence of uh, 0 0.96. So equals 0 0.96. All right, so that means a T critical value for two-sided confidence interval is going to be equal to T to IMV. Um, but let's get our size of our sample, N. So this is going to be equal to uh, how many values are in column A. So in this case, it's 9. So this is going to be T to IMV of 1 plus our level of confidence divided by 2, comma, our degrees of freedom. Since we're in two dimensions, this is going to be n minus 2. So this is going to be my uh, critical value for t. All right, so with that being said, now we should be able to construct our confidence interval. Uh, but let's also calculate our standard deviation of x, since we're going to need that. So this is going to be equal to stdv dot s of column a. So let's recall what our confidence interval is. So we need to do the product of our critical value, the reciprocal of the standard deviation, and the square root of the quotient of SSR divided by m minus 1 and m minus 2. So let's go through that. So marginal of error, m error is what I'm going to call it. So this is going to be equal to our t critical value times 1 over our standard deviation of x times the square root of our SSR divided by n minus 1 times n minus 2. A typo. Okay, it fixed it. All right, so that is my margin of error for my 96% uh, confidence interval. So my slope of my line of best fit, uh, Excel calculated for me, was 15.19. So I can calculate my confidence interval for M. So this is going to be a lower boundary and an upper boundary. So this is going to be equal to M minus our margin of error. And this is going to be M plus my margin of error. So this is my confidence interval for M, uh, or for beta 1, uh, the slope of the line of best fit for the parameter. So as we see, the slopes uh, of all these lines are pretty much in the positive spectrum. Uh, so we're pretty confident that the slope of the line of the best fit for the parameter is going to be positive sloped. But notice from 0 to negative 39, there are some negative correlations there. So under our level of confidence, we're not necessarily certain. Uh, that the correlation for the um, uh, between satisfaction levels or weekly salaries are totally positive, um, but at least we have some evidence that you know there is some positive trend uh, between these two variables. But that's pretty much how you conduct a confidence interval or construct a confidence interval for the slope of the line of the best fit for the population.